All right, so uh, I'll jump right in, uh, kind of update on topics that have happened since the last time I spoke. So first, I just want to congratulate all of our guys that got into the Hall of Fame. I know our fans have been waiting, and they've been waiting for a long time. So I know the entire organization is uh, really excited for them. Um, Flu said it yesterday, excited about our coaching staff we put together uh, moving forward. Shane and Eric and, and the rest of the crew um, were in good hands. They're going to do a really good job. They coach hit on all the topics, teachers, communicators, um, Shane's got a really good feel for both the run and the pass game. Ability to adapt and adjust and the things that we're looking for. So we're really pumped about that. Uh, Cody and Eddie, um, I know we put out a piece on, on them, but just want to say thank you to them for what they've done for the Bears. Um, we felt like it was the right time to give them opportunity to, to go test the market, see what's out there for them. Um, I want to do right by them and, and do it as early as possible so they can put their plans in place. Um, but really thankful for their leadership and everything they brought to the organization. Um, Jalen Johnson, um, in the process of getting Jalen Johnson done, um, conversations are going well at this time. Uh, we feel like we've done a really good job um, kind of coming to the table strong, um, showing the respect um, that he's due just in terms of his production through his career and really an emphasis on the turnovers that he created this past year. Our expectation is that's going to continue to go um, as he's with the Bears. Um, when I say coming strong, it means cash flows are strong, guarantees are strong. Uh, the term is strong for him. Um, being hit with his age, uh, there's a really good opportunity for him to go back to the market again, um, continue to earn money and play well, and hopefully that's with the Bears for a long period of time. So I'm excited about that. Uh, like I've said about those deals all the time, it takes two to tango, and you got to find a, a place that everyone feels comfortable with. So uh, I feel really good about that situation. Now the hot topic. Uh, <laughs> the first pick, quarterback situation. Um, contrary to reports out there, I have no master plan to present to everyone today. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to continue to gather information, um, learn about the different players in the draft, um, listen to what opportunities could come up. Um, and then at the end of the day, we're going to make the best decision um, that we can for the Chicago Bears. Uh, it will not be based on fear of what could happen with this and what could happen with that. We're going to put our information together and make the best decision because at the end of the day, we'll always throw our decision making against kind of our core kind of deal, which is win championships and sustain success for a long period of time. There's a lot that goes into that, uh, but we're excited to gather that information and, and create clarity uh, as we go along. Right. So, what, uh, is, what is your, if you decide to draft a quarterback, what is your motivation to trade Justin before free agency starts, knowing that there might be a premium on that? Yeah, again, it just depends on what opportunities pop up. Um, I will say this, um, I think you guys know me uh, well enough now. I do, if we go down that road, um, I want to do right by Justin as well. Uh, no one wants to live in gray. Um, I know that's uncomfortable. I wouldn't want to be in that situation either. So uh, we'll gather the information, we'll move um, as quickly as possible. We're not going to be in a rush um, and see what presents itself and what's best for the organization. Right. Did, you, did you talk to him? I know he made those comments last week about kind of living in limbo on this. Have you had conversations with him about where you guys are at right now in that process? Yeah, so I've always felt, and I told uh, told him this after uh, the season when we had our exit meetings, that you know transparency and communication is, is key in these moments. Um, and I told him we will do that. So I've been in contact with his team and, and kind of let him let them know like what we're looking at, um, how things might play out. Um, and that will continue to communicate as we move forward. Again, I understand how uncomfortable that is for him. Um, but again, like I told him, and he understands, I think he said it the other day too, it's, it's part of this business. It is a unique situation. So, uh, but yeah, I'll continue that communication. Right. That. Part of the uh, evaluation process in Kansas City in 2017 was the yeah. Holmes. How has that experience helped shape the way you go about evaluating quarterbacks and, and things you do in that regard? Yeah, my background is, is I'm really fortunate to kind of see <clears throat> multiple phases and different types of processes put in place um, with, you know, bringing a quarterback in uh, from a trade to drafting. Um, so, again, there's, there's a process that we've learned in terms of tape watching and getting to know guys and bringing them in and spending time with them to feel comfortable with, with that setup. Um, so I can definitely tap into that experience. Right. In terms of Jalen Johnson, you said things are, are going well with him. Do you think it's more likely that there is a long-term deal with him than the franchise tag? I hope so. I'd like to avoid the franchise tag uh, for him. I think there's a really good space uh, for us to find a middle ground. Um, again, 
we always have the tag to, to use, um, but I really would like to, to get something done long term. Ryan, how do you view, philosophically, how do you view the draft assets you'd have picking first and ninth? You would theoretically be targeting star players if you kept those picks yep. versus converting those into more picks, but they are lesser picks. Yeah, that that goes into the equation, right? I mean, you got to look at what's there in, in that area in terms of drafting. Um, again, you got to listen to the trade, like you don't trade back one, trade back two, trade back 15, like that changes the dynamic based on where the board is set up. I think I talked about that last year. We'll end up counting the guys in certain spaces that we feel like can beat impact players for our team. Um, so that goes in the equation as well. Um, but I think it's a really good opportunity to improve our football team. And the other thing is like very open and understand that draft picks are just opportunity, right? You got to capture that. You got to be right with your draft picks. Um, so we understand that as well. I know you said the process of evaluating the quarterbacks. Obviously, at the top of the draft, there have been a lot of misses at the quarterback position. Yeah. Would it be maybe learned about what goes into making a player, you know, a great quarterback at the next level? Yeah, um, there's a lot there, right? It's like, what's the infrastructure look like? What's around the player? I think that's key, um, and I think that's probably uh, messed with the numbers a lot when you're talking about the top of the draft. I think that's what makes our situation unique and why we have to really do a deep dive in, into it. Um, I think the person is a huge part. I've talked about that a lot. What's the makeup, the leadership? How do they handle pressure? Um, how do they handle pressure in a big city like ours? Um, so a lot of those factors go in. Ryan, I know you said you weren't going to make a big reveal today in terms of what, have, you're, uh, yeah, what you're doing. I have nothing to reveal at all. Yeah, yeah no, I, I totally I wish understand. I did. Yeah, I know. That's what I wait. Yeah, that's what I wait. Um, <laughs> I, I, I totally understand that. But all right, do you have an idea, like, how? what's the percentage of – what you think you know right now ahead of the combine? Like how important is the combine in making the decision? Yeah, right now it's like a hundred different scenarios that you go down and, and try to plot out and you're forecasting forward to see what's gonna work out and probabilities and, and things like that. But at the end of the day, the human being part, getting to know someone, um, getting to know a group of people is really gonna determine that not, there's gonna be options um, <clears throat> that pop up all the time that you don't see coming. I think I said it last year, like something will happen mm. at some point in the next few months that no one expects. Right. Um, so you got to be on your toes for that. So the picture will change as we go. Right, right, right. Right. You, you trade the number one mindset this year with the number one overall picks and what you had last year, have you tried it? Um, no, I mean, it's, a, it's unique, right? Um, but I would say our approach is exactly the same in terms of we got to look at every option and, and determine what is best for our team. Um, obviously, we chose to trade back last year, and I think that that helped our uh, a team out a lot. So um, again, we'll we'll do a deep dive and, and see how it plays out. How are you, how are you after evaluating the top guys that we can gather any information? Do you have any concern at all that Dylan Williams or the team around don't want to play in Chicago? No, no. No concerns about that at all. I, I would love to know why if that was the case. Like I said, I think um, as a young quarterback, and I've been around it, the infrastructure is important. And I think we've made really good progress in terms of having really good infrastructure for whoever were to come in or if just were to stay here as well. In, in terms of your quarterback evaluation when you were in Kansas City, Cliff Kingsbury said that you know uh, Patrick Mahomes and Caleb Williams are eerily similar. When you watch the tape, do you see that? There's pieces. There's pieces that are similar. Uh, obviously, the one that stands out to everyone is just different arm angles. Um, that's a unique trait. Not a lot of guys um, can do that. Uh, I'll give Jeff King, um, who's on my team, credit. He, he painted a picture of, you know, there's two types of quarterbacks. There's artists and then there's surgeons. Um, so within that group, you can kind of see who's the artist create, that's really creative. Um, it doesn't draw within the lines where there's more of surgeons who are, you know, like your typical, like the Brady's and Peyton. So um, you kind of branch them out on those buckets and go from there. So that's where they're, they're similar. Is there a percentage you pre prefer with artists and surgeons? No, winners. <laughs> yes. If you do move off the number one pick, we've heard crazy, we've heard historic, all those adjectives used for the amount of compensation you'd need. What what are you looking for? Yeah, it's hard to say right now, um, but it's it's got to, help our organization significantly to, to move around um, because we saw what it did last year. Um, and I'm looking for that type of return to continue to improve our football team. Right. Do you want to know what you're going to do? Tomorrow. 
<laughs> no, in all seriousness, though, before no, free agency? Or, or? I would love to know as soon as possible. Right. I mean, I, mean, I would love to know. Um, but I know that's not how the process works. Um, you know, there's sure before free agency would be good. Like I said, I'm also taking, um, you know, if we were to do something with Justin, like I want to be right by him. Um, and I know, again, living in that gray space, you would want to do something sooner rather than later. Um, but just like I talked about with contracts, it takes two teams to figure that out. Um, but at the same time, we're also trying to figure out the draft process as well. So there's a lot of different things with different timelines going, and that's what makes it a little Ryan, bit difficult. Ryan, part of your process over the next six weeks, what do you see as the, the best ways for you to evaluate the wiring of quarterbacks? And what, what do you like to do to, to learn who they are? Yeah, spend time. Spend time. That's, I mean, right, any type of relationship, you know, it's, it's time on task and um, just kind of getting to know the personality. Um, there's been a ton of information gathering from my team just in terms of teammates, coaches, things like that. Um, but you got to spend time with another person, really understanding the, the wiring. Are what, you, what are you trying to feel out in that process? What are you looking for from that? Yeah, you look for examples of dependability. You're looking selflessness, leadership, um, <laughs> ownership. You know, like I think it's hard these days to find people that, you know, hey, this is wrong. And it's like, yeah. It was wrong. This is what I have to do to correct it rather than just kind of BS your way through it. So, um, yeah, with time on task and spending time with these guys who will get to know some of those things. So are, you, are, you expecting, are you expecting a busier combine than usual? Like I'm imagining you're going to be a pretty popular guy this week. Everybody yeah. wants to buy you dinner and yeah. talk about all these different assets that you might trade. I mean, is it going to be a different combine for you? Yeah, it feels that way. Yeah. Has it already started? Oh, yeah, my phone won't stop. <laughs> how, 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 are people, how aggressive are people with Fishing for information from other teams to see what you Yeah, it's, you know, it starts slow. We were at the Senior Bowl. I know people are kind of poking around. They're, I haven't had, like, big-time conversations with anyone, uh, but everyone wants to, you know, take a temperature of what's going on. So, um, yeah, yeah. How yeah. would you say last year's trade worked out for you guys, for the Panthers, and even Houston that didn't get the number one set? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll only comment on us. I thought it, it worked out really well. Um, just adding two good players like Darnell and, and DJ. Um, had no idea this would work out where it'd be the first overall pick, uh, but I would say that's successful. Um, and then, you know, a future two as well. So uh, it worked out well for us. You know, we'll keep growing up with that. You want to go universally loved Justin to spy this team. If you thought about what that conversation is going to be like, it's, if you do train and what you're going to like delivering that message to the team. Yeah. Um, you know, he's a leader. Every, everything our guys have said, it's true. And not surprised our guys have said what they have said. I feel the same way. Um, and I think sometimes this whole thing gets, you know, Justin versus another person. Um, and I have to look at it a little bit differently. I take that into effect. That's why the person is so important when we evaluate other people that would come in that position. Um, but also it's my job to think of the long term and, and a lot of our guys kind of don't don't see that. That's not your, their job to do that. And they defend their guy, which I think speaks volume, volumes about our culture and our locker room. I mean, you've made big trades before. Would that cause a, is there anxiety that comes with that for someone who would be, have to deliver that sort of news? No, because I have faith um, in our ability to communicate with our guys. Um, and when we do that, I think they'll know that it's in the best interest of, of the team. And I think as we've moved along here, I think they, the the trust factor is there that they're in good hands with however we decide to kind of pull when, out. When you more guys to work. Wise, for the college quarterbacks, you do really need to get all the way to private workouts, bring them in the building to know, and how would that impact your decision with, with Justin? Um, yeah. So, you know, again, the different. there's a lot of different timelines going. So uh, being creative with, with finding time to, to spend with the different prospects and and if we can get a private workout, things like that, that does help come to a conclusion and, and kind of fill in all the boxes that you need. So if, that, if you identify a quarterback home. prospect as your guy, is there any price that can move you off of your guy? Um, it would be our guy, right? Like it's, it's not about me at all. Um, that's hard to answer right now because I need kind of the whole puzzle put together to, to figure that out. Thanks, Ryan. Yep. Thanks, Ryan.